Right, review please. Can we have Man From U.N.C.L.E.? Yes, from Matthew Vaughan to his old uh, pal Guy Ritchie, who has come back with an adaptation of the 1960s spy TV series. Now, this show, when it was first broadcast, The Man From U.N.C.L.E., was first broadcast in 1964. It was co-created by Ian Fleming, and it was basically Bond on TV. You know, this was two years after Doctor No. And it played very much on the political tensions of the time. You had two spies, one from either side of the Iron Curtain. There was Napoleon Solo, who represented the CIA, and Ilya Kuryakin, who represented the KGB. And they are played in Ritchie's version by Henry Cavill and Army Hammer, basically Superman versus the Lone Ranger. <laughs> now, their first mission is to track down a missing nuclear scientist. It's, you know, it's, the Cold War is, is, is building up. Uh, this nuclear scientist has gone missing from what you, the, the, the smouldering wreckage of what used to be Nazi Germany. And there's a general uh, international concern that he may be collaborating with some kind of uh, dormant fascist force. And so here is uh, Jared Harris playing an incredibly growly CIA operative, uh, passing on this mission to uh, Mr. Cavill. You told me this was going to be a simple extraction. It should have been. I didn't ask you to light up half of East Berlin. They were waiting for me. Don't flatter yourself. They follow everybody. What was waiting for me was barely human. You should have seen it run. Grow a spine, Solo. Contrary to what you may think, we are not in the haberdashery business. I don't think you understand. It tore the back off my car. Remind me, Solo. How long was your prison sentence? You owe me five more years. Now, I know you've been taking care of yourself on the side, awaiting your beak, so to speak. We don't pay you enough to be able to put truffles in your risotto solo. But don't ever make the calamitous error of mistaking my deliberate short-sightedness for blindness. Now you report for duty tomorrow morning, 9 a.m. sharp. And with a better attitude. That's you told. I think these are very fine voices to listen through headphones to. Yeah, wow. So the daughter of this missing nuclear scientist is Gabby Teller, who is what was being extracted in that clip. She is a, 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 a um, car repair woman who's living in East Germany. Um, and she's played by Alicia Vikander, who we've seen, of course, in Ex Machina and Testament of Youth, both earlier this year, both tremendous performances. And she, along with uh, Cavill and Army Hammer, have to go and track down her father. Now... I don't think it's it's kind of being disloyal at all to Guy Ritchie to say that 10 years ago, basically, his name was Mud. You know, he'd made two awful films in a row, swept away in Revolver. And the gangster movie scene, which he'd helped to kickstart, really single-handedly kickstarted with Lock, Stock and Two Smoking Barrels, and Snatch had really soured. He was then uh, offered this olive branch by Joel Silver, who's a producer at Warner Brothers, and he made Rock and Roller with him, and then was handed, to me very unexpectedly, the keys to the Sherlock Holmes franchise, which is being uh, built up with Robert Downey Jr. and Jude Law. Now, the two Sherlock Holmes films that he made, I think, were perfectly serviceable generic blockbusters that just happened to be set in, in Victorian London. The first thing to say about The Man From U.N.C.L.E. is that this is unlike those films. It's not trying to be a modern blockbuster at all. I think there are only three full-blooded action scenes in the whole thing. And they're very, very well executed, but really the, the most of the film is taken up with sneaking around <laughs> and talking and wearing wonderful clothes. Now, um, Solo and Kuryakin have this wonderful rivalry throughout the film. <laughs> the chemistry between uh, Henry Cavill and Army Hammer, I think, is, is terrific. You know, they, yeah. they bounce... Uh, various insults off each other, they nickname each other different things, uh, Kriakin calls Solo cowboy, and uh, the, the, the reverse is peril, as in red, because he's from behind the Iron Curtain and is a bit of a commie. And the dialogue has this playful, kind of homoerotic innuendo edge to it, <laughs> but it is not in any way laddish, you know, if you've kind of, if your memory of Guy Ritchie is the, the kind of souring of the uh, the British gangster movie, then this, I think, will come as a big surprise. You know, it's very kind of suave and sleek and affectionate between the two of them. And also, Alicia Vikander is not just the glamorous psychic. You know, her role, she is given things to do, and she drives the story forward as much as either of the men. And I think it's interesting because, you know, Guy Ritchie in his earlier films, I mean, they, you couldn't even describe them as misogynistic because there were no women in them to be misogynistic about. It was just man, 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 man. Yeah. And he has either really learned how to write women in the, in the intervening few years or his co-writer on this, Lionel Wigram, has, has taught him how because she is a great role. Also, uh, playing the part of Victoria Vinciguerra, who is this Italian uh, socialite who is part of this uh, the fascist menace, is an Australian actress called Elizabeth Debicki and she is just a tremendous villainess. You know, she... Yeah. Uh, in, in she was in The Great Gatsby, wasn't she? She was in The Great Gatsby, mm. yes. This is a real star-making role for... The, I mean, I certainly hope it is. She also gets more than a fair share of innuendo 
innuendo. I wrote in my Telegraph review, she, she sloshes the words around in her mouth like cognac. Having thought about it for a bit longer, I now think it's like stretching out a Highland toffee bar. You know the way you get these... <laughs> yeah sweets between your teeth and you just do this <laughs> and that's every line is delivered with this kind of inflection yeah and it's very very funny and it's very kind of aware of itself but it doesn't to me feel like it's kind of lapsing into spoof or self-parody yeah uh, the film begins in berlin of course uh, when, when the two spies meet up it then relocates to rome which is where the majority of the mission takes place and the, the the look of it is just very kind of glamorous. It has this kind of technicolor ache about it. The, yeah. the scenery looks fantastic. There are, of course, the uh, the, the famous steps in Rome in the middle that Gregory Peck uh, went past on the on the Vespa in Roman holiday. Films like that are constantly being evoked in, in The Man From U.N.C.L.E. There's another moment in which Army Hammer's character is on a motorbike. I mean, it's basically the same motorbike and the same camera angles as Steve McQueen at the end of The Great Escape. So it's Guy Ritchie paying tribute to this style of filmmaking that's very, very much fallen out of fashion. And it feels in the best possible way like a bank holiday TV movie that you're rediscovering. There's so much in this film is familiar in a very good way. You know, it, it, the idea of... Um, for example, there's a scene at a racetrack in which Henry Cavill arrives sneaking through the, the kitchen tent and he does this wonderful little carefree saunter through as if he has no worries about being caught at all. Yeah. He also picks up a prawn from a passing plate <laughs> and feeds himself. And it's this idea of an actor being totally at ease in his own body and in the environment that I think in the age of green screen filmmaking, you get far less of just yeah. because there's less environment mm -hmm. to be at ease in. And this is something that the film does incredibly well. Um, you know, it's, it's two hours of attractive people being glamorous and being funny that's not a particularly fashionable reason at the moment to, to for people to go to the cinema this, uh, these days. But it is, and it should be. Yeah. And The Man From U.N.C.L.E. is an excellent excuse uh, to do it.